it's there on the side of your pinky, your little toe, and there. And that's your ears. Who is struggling with shoulders? I know you've had problems with your shoulders as well. This is the area that you would work on. So, this part of your foot, you can see it almost if you look up, the zone's going that way. Reach your shoulders. So, number eight is the cervical spine part here, or the, the cervical part of your spine, which is this area along here. Hello Melissa. Hello. Thank you so much for volunteering again to help me with one of my other therapies, um, which is reflexology, which was really the toughest therapy for me to learn. Um, not because I didn't love it, I absolutely love reflexology, but there is so much to learn on this one and it's very complex and it's going to take me quite a while to get back in to knowing all the things that I need to know to, in order to give you a good treatment. So one of the things that I thought we'd start off with is just really looking at the feet and where the different areas of the foot correlate to different parts of the body. Because as you may have heard about reflexology, um, there are what we call transverse and longitudinal zones of the feet which then connect to other parts of the body. And the original thoughts on reflexology um, were that there were 10 longitudinal zones. So for example, you would have one zone going down each from each toe, which would correspond upwards to various systems and parts of the body. And equally, there are some transverse ones as well. And that was originally introduced um, by uh, an American ear, throat and nose surgeon, ironically, um, who came up with zone therapy. That was replaced later by somebody who mapped out that in a lot more detail and did a sort of map of the feet. And you can see here, I've got a lovely diagram here of the bottom of the feet and you can see there's an index here of all the different parts of the body and what it relates to. And later on, you can see it's not just the bottom of the foot, it's the side and the top of the foot as well, which is known as the dorsal view. So what I thought I would do, and really this is you helping me, is try and get me to memorise some of these areas of the foot. Hopefully you're going to jog my memory system um, and hopefully get some benefit as well, because once I've got this in my head, I can then move on to start giving you a reflexology treatment. But my first thought when I looked at this again was, I really don't remember enough about it and I need to be much more knowledgeable about the different areas of the foot. So I'm using you as a bit of a guinea pig. So what I thought would be helpful, hopefully you're not too ticklish. No, i would be good. fine. Um, is really use this wonderful picture, and this is one that um, was given to me by my lecturer many years ago. We're talking about 14 years ago now. Um, it's a very well-known diagram of the different areas on your foot that correlate to the different parts of the body. So I'm literally just going to name them and then I'm gonna hope that that stimulates some memory in my brain as well. Uh, Cause I really want to get back to reflexology and doing the treatment as soon as I can, but I need to be a little bit more knowledgeable first. Right, okay, so we're gonna make a start. So number one. Number one is the brain and sinuses. And according to this diagram, it's literally the top of the toes, because obviously your brain covers the whole of the top part of your body there. So that is each of this little spot there. So that's number one. And I see I've immediately gone to the move that I would do in reflexology. So clearly the memory stimulation's working. So that's absolutely fantastic. So brain, caught that in my head already. Then number two 
is the outer ear and this is a little bit challenging to find you actually have to go in with your fingers but I'm just gonna show you so that you can feel it it's there on the side of your pinky your little toe and there and that's your ears oh it's Amazing. right on the inside it is so you have to really get when you treat you have to really get your fingers in and it's the same on the um, other foot as well um, then we've got number three which is the inner ear which is on your smaller toe here and this one here on the inside so you have to really get in and treat that number four which is the next toe inside there and the next one here as well and that is the eye and where's number five? Oh, I remember this number five is way up here which is the hypothalamus and the pineal is that so once I start treating you again I'll be able to actually feel that number six which is this one here and here so there and there is the pituitary gland which is great and then number seven is right in here and that is the side of the neck so you can see if you because I can see from here if you go upwards like that you can see how it goes along the body up to your neck mm -hmm. so it's in the same same zone and there are ten zones because obviously you've got ten toes and each of the zones go upwards and I could be treating one part and it's almost reaching the other part of a your body in that zone so if I'm treating zone one I'm almost treating everything in that zone to make sure that it's all cleared of toxins and things like that the whole part of uh, whole point of reflexology is to get the body to stimulate its own healing um, reflexology itself doesn't fix things it, it actually activates the body and helps the body to okay. activate healing that makes so much sense I don't think I've ever fully grasped that before yeah because i think when things get quite confusing it's when people think reflexology fixes everything by just pressing parts of the foot but that makes so much more sense it does it's it's, it's similar to acupressure although acupressure works off meridian lines it's slightly different but this it, it's the same sort of um the pressure that stimulates that sort of healing mode mm. um and different parts of the body can be healed alongside that and obviously it's working to get rid of toxins and tiredness and all of this sort of thing um, there's lots of anecdotal evidence obviously the scientific evidence is limited um, but lots of um, doctors do believe that there's an element of that I think even if it's just if it's say, say some people thought it was placebo yeah. If a placebo works, that's powerful in itself. It is. So. You're right. And uh, the placebo effect is a well-known effect of reflexology. Right. So let's have a look um, where we've got to. Seven. Number eight. So number eight is the cervical spine part here, or the, the cervical part of your spine, which is this area along here. That's interesting. It's like uh, looking at a jigsaw puzzle. I'm just going to have to make that slightly larger. Okay, number nine. There we go, number nine. See, when I was studying, we just had a piece of paper. We had to keep bringing this up and down. Now, obviously, um, I've got a wonderful iPad here with a very colourful diagram. It makes life so much easier because if you're unsure, you can just enlarge it and bring that up. It makes life a lot easier. So number nine, if I draw that line there, and it's this whole area here is your shoulder and your arm. So if you've, um, if I've got a client who is struggling with shoulders, I know you've had problems with your shoulders as well. This is the area that you would work on. So this part of your foot, you can see it almost, if you look up, the zone's going that way, reach your shoulders 
from here I can actually see them angled. So if I was working along these bits, that would be your shoulder and working on that to stimulate some sort of healing reaction, which would be good. Um, number 10 is your eustachian and we would work along these areas here. Okay, and then we've got 11, which is just under here, which is your neck and your thyroid. So that's that tiny little bit here. And one of the reasons reflexology took me so long to learn is it's very precise. Some of the movements are very, very small and it takes a long time to learn how to do the various movements. So once I've relearned where everything is, then I need to go back to practicing the various movements and hopefully you'll help me with that as well. Okay, let's look at number 12, which is the bronchial and thyroid, or thyroid helper to be more specific, which is this one here. So coming down there, and coming down there. So that's bronchial. And then, oh, 13. Gosh, why is that so? Oh, okay, that's interesting. So 13 is the chest and lung area. So it's actually quite a wide area. I do remember this, because I think when you get to treat it, you have to do quite a few moves around it. So the lung area is this huge area here. So chest and lung. And then um, I always find this interesting because on the heart one, the heart is really interesting because it's here. This is number 14. But then it on this side, which if you do it the way it is, is actually your left side, comes in much further so you have to treat much further in on this foot because your heart although people say oh you know your heart's here it's actually slightly over to the left um so slightly more of it is over to your left which actually if you can see on this diagram i'm going to show you can see it's slightly yeah. more over there and the tiny bit here. It's interesting. Really interesting. I know, fascinating. Right, where do we get to heart? So heart and um, it's number 14. So number 15 is something called the um, es esophagus. It's funny spelling, funny word to look at, um, but it's and I think I've pronounced it correctly, um, esophagus. It's spelt O-E-S-O-P-H-A-G-U-S. -E -S -S. Very unusual spelling. And it's only on this foot, and it comes down there, right across the heart, and stops about here. Really interesting. So you've only got to work it on this foot when you're working it. Right, number... 16 is the thoracic spine. So you've got this on both areas. So you can see your spine obviously covers both sides of the body. So actually it's the inside part here all the way down your foot, the insides of both feet. Right, so the inside of your feet is where the spine is. So the thoracic spine all the way along here. So it starts about here, because eight is the cervical spine here, so the thoracic spine comes all the way down just about there. Yep, that's good. And then after that, we've got um, number 17, which is, if I remember the diaphragm, which is this area along here. So let's try and draw it with here. There just that area so that's your diaphragm so this area of your chest and then if I remember right in the middle of that is the solar plexus yeah hey got that right so solar plexus which is here which I've even remembered the movement for that which is slightly just pressure and you find 
with reflexology, as I said, the movements are so precise. And this one is just a slight pressure, but you can feel where people have got issues because, or I can feel the difference between what it should be and what it shouldn't feel like. Um, often there's like crunchy grit or it feels like mini crystals. Um, sometimes it just feels slightly more swollen than it should. And then that indicates to you that there's a problem in that zone, which right. you've got to work out what it is and maybe work on it to stimulate that healing element. Okay, so 19 is the liver on this side. So liver quite large here. There we go. So those of you that can see the diagram, it's the big diagram there. And then 20, which is just within the liver area, is the gallbladder here is just on that side there. Then we move across to 21, which is this huge area on this side, which is the stomach. So that's that area here, the stomach. And within that stomach area, just over here, is the spleen area as well. Um, then we've got 23, which is the adrenals. Oh yes, that's just this tiny area here, which is the adrenals. And then 24 just underneath that, which is the pancreas, which is there pancreas, a tiny little bit of it on the other side as well. And then you've got the kidneys, obviously you've got two of those, um, on either side, just like a sort of funny shape, uh, kidney, kidney shape. And then we've got something called the waistline, which we'll talk about when we talk a little bit more about zoning um, or transverse zoning but you need that as an indicator which is the waistline so it helps you to navigate above and below the waist so it's more a navigation tool but that is your waistline there and then we'll go back to this um, which is 27 which is the uh, so if we go from 25 which is the kidneys and then 27 is the tube known as the ureter which takes obviously the waste from those kidneys on both sides to 28 which is the bladder and actually it's a little bit further down here the bladder feel it on yours there oh right 29 gosh okay Yes, I should remember this one because this one always stumped me before as well. So 29 is the duodenum, which is actually to a, a little bit to the side of the kidneys, just this area here. Okay, and then we go back to looking at uh, the um, slightly larger areas, which is the intestine. Um, which, and the small intestine covers a huge area. So it's called the small intestine. It's actually quite a large area. So that's on this foot and on this foot here as well. Ooh, I think I've sent you to sleep already. <laughs> Is yeah. it very relaxing here about yes. hearing about different parts of your body? Keeps flying. Oh sleep. dear, no, not to worry. You carry on. You're <laughs> being helpful to me, so that's fine. Um, and then we've got. Um, 31, so there's quite a lot of small areas here to look at. So 31, which is your appendix. 32, just slightly above it, which is something called your iliocacial valve. And then 33, you've got the ascending colon. And this is very important because at some point, uh, from memory, I do remember you've got to work your way all around the colon and the colon covers 
both feet so you can move from one foot to the other when you're um, doing this very intricate move. So you've got the ascending colon, 33, 34, which is the hepatic flexure here. Um, then you've got, um, and this is only on this foot because as I said, you've got when you do your intricate moves later, you are moving from one foot to the other all around this um, intestine. So ascending colon, hepatic, hepa, hepatic flexure, and then you've got the transverse colon, which takes you along this foot and then over onto what would be your left foot. Um, and then along there, just at the top of there, you've got something called the splenic flexure. And then you've got the descending colon coming down to the very bottom here. And then you've got the sigmoid colon. And then um, 39, which takes you back to the lumbar spine. So when we came down, you know, I stopped earlier on this spine area. This part down here is the lumbar spine area. So that takes us um, to that area, which is um, quite interesting. So that I find quite um, a therapeutic area. And I know that I've massaged people before around that and that seems to have quite a big impact. People often get um, things stuck in their colon and it's almost like doing that seems to shift things, um, which is good. Right, then we've got, um, that takes us to the lumbar spine here. And then after that, we've got the coccyx. So that relates to the coccyx and that's on both sides of the foot then, or both sides of the feet rather on the inside here. Um, and then that takes you to 42, which is the bottom part here, which takes you to the sciatic nerves. And then I think we're done on this diagram that finishes that off. Um, and takes us then to the side of the foot. So that's quite a lot. So one of the reasons that I found reflexology totally fascinating, but very challenging to learn is there is just so much in a very small space and you have to be so precise in terms of your knowledge. And that really takes us to um, covering the whole of the bottom of the foot. So it gives us a very good idea of all of the things that are covered in that area. So quite a lot you can see. So we're just going to rest it there for a minute before we move on to other parts of the foot.